Hey, what's happening, everyone? So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Professor Hu Yang from the Ahsoka television show. So Hu Yang appeared in a few episodes of Clone Wars. He was great in that series. And for me, the live action version was a highlight of the Ahsoka series. And David Tennant did a great job with the voice. Super cool character, and I'm happy to have a figure of him. And of course, this comes in the Galaxy packaging. Star Wars The Black Series up top. Through the window, you can see Hu Yang comes with his little backpack with the extra arms. That's pretty cool. He's got his little data pad, a training saber. It would have been nice to have at least one more of those, but that's okay. Here we have Star Wars Ahsoka and Professor Hu Yang. On this side of the box, the front window wraps around, and there's the side with the artwork. It's a nice picture of Hu Yang. I like that, and I do love the color for the Ahsoka line. There's a small window on the top, and on the bottom, you got the barcode, some small print, and some logos. And there's the back of the box. you got the same picture as the side. You have a rundown of the show in five different languages. Professor Hu Yang is number seven in the Ahsoka line, and you have some more small print down there. All right, I'm going to get Hu Yang and all these accessories out of this box, and let's take a look at them. Okay, so here is Hu Yang out of the box, and let me just say, the detail on this guy is pretty incredible. As far as the paint, the sheen, or the finish may not be exactly how it was in the show, but man, the detail is pretty incredible. So let's take a close look. We'll start up here with his face, if you will, and this looks good. And I love how the eyes kind of reflect. It would have been super cool if they had done the little black lines that are in his eyes. I don't know if that's... <laughs> if that would have been possible or not, because these are so small, but it would have looked awesome. But it's nice that they shine. The nose looks good, the mouth, these things coming down, very cool, his little ears, and the detail on his jaw there on both sides is pretty, it's just nice. And on his neck, you've got some really cool stuff going on on his neck, that fine detail in there. Yeah, that's cool. And then the top of his head looks like that, this nice blue, Got his little magnifying glass. It would have been awesome if that were to flip down, you know, like when he was fixing the ship. Again, that may be kind of hard to engineer there, but that would have been awesome. But God, from the neck up, great looking head and face. And moving on to the chest. So you got some cool stuff going on there. That's cool. This is very nice. I love this little thing sticking out there. And you got one sticking up over here. Shoulders look good. This kind of dark gray kind of gunmetal look. It reflects nicely. I love that. Same thing back here. These reflect. So on his back, you got a hole for the backpack, and then these two things help keep the backpack nice and stable. That's nice. The arms look good. Got all this going on there. Even got some detail on the inside of the upper arm. That is just really neat there. It's like every time you look at this figure, you see something new. Yeah, same thing on this arm. You know, the hands look good. The belly is really cool. All this... All these wires on his abdomen, his lower back. Yeah, that's nice. And the belt and the apron, I like it. All these pouches just look so good. It would have been nice if they would have thrown a little more paint on this belt. You know, the sculpt is there. All these little bits in there. Man, it would have been awesome if those were painted. I mean, you do have a little bit of black there and a silver buckle. And moving on to legs, you know, they look good. You got this back here that looks really nice. It's nice and reflective. The joints look cool. The, his calf, if you will, looks amazing. I love this. Oh, this nice detail in there. And then feet. Yeah, the feet look cool. Yeah, from top to bottom. This is a nicely detailed figure. And for articulation, he has some very good side to side. Now the neck will turn and the head will also turn. So you've got two points there. It's on like a double ball. He can look down pretty far. He can look way up. Yeah, way up. And he's got some crazy tilt. So he is lots of range in the head. Now for shoulders, I actually had to heat these up. These were completely frozen right out of the box, okay, but they get up about that far and they have some really wacky detents. They're super tight. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to break them, but they can rotate around as far as elbows. They can get up just to 90. There's a swivel at the elbow, a swivel at the wrist, and he does have side-to-side -side hinges on both, and I don't know why I'm on the left side. Usually I go right side, but, but yeah, that was the left, and here's the right. And for midsection, you've got some swivel down here where the belt is, and you have some pretty good crunch, some very good back, but it does gap. You can see it's on a ball as well, and you have some crazy tilt, so there's a lot of range in his midsection. And as far as legs here, you can flip this up. So the legs get up that far, they go out, just to there, they go all the way back. Oh, speaking of going back, the elbows can hyperextend 90 degrees that way. That's pretty crazy. All right, back to legs. So there's no thigh cut, but you do have some very nice swivel at the hip joint. 
upper knees. They get up to there. Now there is a swivel above the knee joint as well as below the knee joint. That's pretty cool. And for feet, they go down that far before the back of the foot runs into that. And then going forward, that runs into that. And then side to side, okay, that runs into the ankle. So all this sculpt kind of affects articulation in the feet, but it's no big deal because I don't think he's going to be in any dynamic poses. And as far as accessories, I think I'll just start with the backpack. And this thing is pretty cool. Got some nice detail right there. Kind of a, you know, kind of a brownish color with this same color that he is. Um, that's cool. Got a single peg, but because of those things on his back that engage right there, it can't rotate. And these arms, okay, it folds out there. It folds out there. And then this can come around. That is nice. That is really cool. And then, let's see. Yeah, I don't want to get this backwards. That goes that way. There. Pretty cool little backpack, and it goes in the hole on his back, and then you got to make sure those things engage right there on either side, like that. Okay, so there is no way that can rotate. Very, very secure on his back. And as far as these hands coming up and over, let's flip this one up. There. All right. They're a little... <laughs> okay, they're right next to his head. It would have been nice if they would have pivoted out just a little bit, uh, but they don't. It is strictly just hinge, hinge, and hinge. It only goes this way. Okay. Um, it's not terrible. I don't think I will ever use these, but it's cool that they did this. I mean, it's some pretty good engineering there, but man, it would have been awesome if they would pivot out. Uh, but that's what that looks like. Okay, let me fold these back down for now. Yeah, three hinges there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love the backpack. And next up, we have the training saber, and this is a pretty cool sculpt. I think it looks pretty accurate to what we saw on the show. You got some nice kind of gunmetal paint there in the middle, some black on the end. Now that gunmetal color is only on one side, but that's okay. Got some stuff there. Got this little loop on this side, and then there's the emitter end. Yeah, it's it's definitely neat. I just wish we had more than one. And let's see how Hu Yang holds this training saber. <laughs> okay, not very well. That's extremely loose. Um, yeah, somebody didn't think that through. Um, all right, if you rotate the part where the gunmetal paint is toward the thumb. All right, that's not terrible. That's not too bad, and I kind of like that. But just imagine being able to recreate this scene. You know, if we had four of these training sabers, that would be awesome. That would be cool. Now they would have to redo these hands back here, you know, obviously. But it would have been nice. Yeah, just one training saber. That's really loose. Let's see how it goes in the left hand. Yep, yeah. Equally loose in the left, okay. So there's nowhere on his belt to put this training saber, but I did discover if you absolutely had to have this thing on him, you can actually wedge it under this pouch right there. And it actually stays. That's a good shake. Uh, it's not coming out. That doesn't look terrible. You know, again, if you absolutely had to have this on him somewhere, yeah, that's an option. And moving on, so here's the data pad that he comes with. And I like this. The uh, screen, if you will, kind of reflects a little bit. You got this beautiful metallic blue paint there. Yeah, so that's what that side looks like. And there's the flip side. You have more of this just gorgeous blue. I just love that. It's a nice accessory. And if you want Hu Yang to hold this like he's using it, okay, you can slip that in the left hand like that, and that's very stable. And you can bring the right hand up here, make it look like he's using it or computing something. Okay, that's actually a nice pose, <laughs> that training saber's staying put. That looks pretty good, actually. That looks pretty good. Now, he, all right, keep in mind, Hu Yang can be a little fiddly to stand sometimes. The ankles, I don't know, the detents in the ankles catch in a funny spot sometimes. Uh, there, that is actually not a bad pose. I like the look of that. So let's go stick him on the shelf and let's see what he looks like there. There we go, and I'm pleased. This figure looks so good, and in this light, his body's actually shining a little bit. The magnifying glass is grabbing the light. Now, his eyes are not going to grab the light because I have his head tilted down looking at his data pad, but that's okay. He looks fantastic, and you can see how he scales. So he is actually taller than Maroc. So he is a pretty tall figure, but man, I cannot get over how good he looks there. So bottom line, strikingly detailed figure from top to bottom. And something I discovered... There is actually some very fine detail in the eyes, right? That looks good. I mean, they didn't do the black lines like in the show, but there is some stuff in there. I love that. But it's like every time I look at him, I see something new, especially on this belt. I mean, there is so much going on. All this nice detail. All this. 
I just love it. Love it. Very, very cool figure. And that's, it's hanging in there. I don't know. That's an option. I don't know if I'm going to keep it there or not, but it's an option. But yeah, I love this figure. I am super happy with it. But just like always, I want to hear from you guys. So please comment below and let me know what you think of Professor Hu Yang from the Ahsoka TV show. And if you enjoy videos on Star Wars The Black Series, please consider dropping a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and don't forget to turn on notifications. I would certainly appreciate it, and I just thank you all so much for watching. See you guys next time.